the Sony PlayStation Portable is a great handheld console, even now in 2024. And best of all, it's incredibly easy to hack it. So let's install some custom firmware onto our console and play some PSP games. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The PlayStation Portable is a great handheld console released by Sony in 2004. Now it was pretty much Sony's answer to the Nintendo DS, which was pretty much dominating the handheld market at the moment. Now when it was launched, it was the most powerful handheld console available, with, with great graphics, um, powerful sound capabilities, and a unique optical disc format for playing games. So th these universal media discs, or, or UMDs, they're, they're basically small DVDs packaged in this little plastic casing. And they pop into, if I come in here, um, there is a pop-up DVD player at the back of this, and they'll simply slot in there, and that's how you would load the game into your PlayStation Portable. Um, so that was a great little idea for, for that. Now, over its 10-year lifespan, the PlayStation Portable went through a number of iterations. So this is one of the original PSP 1000 models, but then they went through the 2000 versions, the 3000 versions, and both of those then had double the RAM of this one. So this, this particular model here has 32 megabytes of RAM, the 2000 and 3000 have 64 megabytes of RAM. Um, they also have then a slightly better screen, but other than that, the system didn't really change. Um, there were a couple of cost-reduced models along the way, like the Street and, and Go, um, but again, they all basically use the same sort of processing system. And if you're looking to get hold of one, you can pick them up on eBay for as little as £40 for a good working condition model. Now, now the great thing about owning a PSP today is that it is incredibly easy to hack. And that will allow you to play any of the PlayStation Portable games, um, as well as expanding the capabilities of the machine with homebrew emulators and, and software. So, so in this video, um, we will upgrade this console with some custom firmware, then add some games from our ROM backups, and get playing with our PlayStation Portable. So before we start, it's important that your PSP is running the latest official firmware, which is version 6.61. So if you go into your main menu and then scroll across to the settings, then down to system settings, and then all the way down to system information, you'll see your current firmware version. Now, if this isn't 6.61, you'll need to run a software update. But once that's all installed then, you're ready for the soft mod. So for this project, we're going to use the ARC4 custom firmware. Now, if you head over to the GitHub repository for the project at this web address, you'll get access then to the source code, the download packages, and some information about the project. So ARC4 is the latest soft mod for the console, and it is a development of the more usual Pro and ME firmware that a lot of people are still using. Now I do prefer ARC as it does include all of the features from the other firmware packages, but as it's still under active development, it's continually improving the software and adding some new features. So to get hold of the software, we simply need to go to the releases page on this GitHub repository and then download the latest zip file. Now, once you've got that downloaded to your PC, you simply need to extract the contents to its own folder and then that's ready for us to transfer across to our PSP. Now, the PSP does have a built-in memory card slot which we can use to get our firmware files onto the console. But once we've hacked our PSP, we're also going to be using it to store our games. Now, as game backup files can be up to 1.5 gigabytes in size, we're going to need a fairly large memory card to be able to store all of our titles. Now, the original PSP memory sticks weren't designed for this, and they do tend to be a bit too small. So your best bet then is to buy a micro SD card adapter so that you can plug a standard micro SD card into your console. 
Now, the documentation does suggest that you can use up to 64 gigabyte SD cards, but um, people do say that they can get 128 gigabytes and 256 gigabyte cards working just as well. Now, for this video, I'm going to be using my 64 gigabyte memory card in my Memory Stick Pro adapter. Now, to set this up, we simply need to plug the memory stick into the console, then turn on the power, and then go across to the settings menu at the far left of the menu options. Now use the D-pad then to scroll down to the system settings and press the X button to select it. Then scroll down till you get to the memory stick um, format option, select that, and then just follow the prompts to format the SD card. So that means our SD card is now ready for use. So there are a number of ways that we can copy files across to our PSP memory card. So you can simply take it out of the console and plug it back into your PC. Or we can connect our PSP to our PC directly over USB. And that will make it pop up then as an external USB drive. So to connect the PSP to USB, you're going to need a mini USB cable. Now the one I'm using here is a combined USB charging and USB connection cable for the PSP. So if you want to get hold of one of these, I'll put a link to that down in the description. Now if you're going to use the USB connection, it's worth checking one of the settings in the system. So if you go into system settings again, and then look for USB auto connect, then just make sure that that's turned on so that when you plug in the USB lead, the PSP will automatically connect to the PC and then show itself up as an external drive. So next we need to actually get our firmware files onto this PSP memory card. So I've connected my PSP via my USB cable and you can see here it's popped up on my PC as an external drive. So I now need to copy two folders from the ARC files that we downloaded across to this SD card. So in the downloads area, I have here my ARC 01234 folder. So I need to copy that, then go across onto my SD card and navigate into the PSP save data folder and then paste it into there. Next, we need to go back onto downloads and we need to copy this ARC underscore loader folder, then back onto the SD card again and again, I'm going to come up a level and I'm now going to go into the PSP game folder and then copy and paste that um, ARC um, loader folder in here. Now, these two folders then are the actual firmware that's going to hack the console. But by themselves, they need to be activated every time we power on the PSP. So to have them permanently installed, we need to copy across one more folder. So back on the download area. We need to make sure we get the software that matches our console. So ARC can also be used for the PlayStation Vita. So make sure that we go into the PSP folder and then in there we'll find an ARC underscore CIPL folder. And we need to copy that, then go across back onto our SD card and then in that PSP game folder, just simply paste it in there. So that's everything copied across to our PSP memory stick. So let's jump across onto the console. So back on the PSP, we need to use the cross media bar menu to navigate across to the game option. Then scroll down until you see memory stick and then select that with the X button. You should find two applications in there. The bottom one should be labeled as Arc Loader. And this is the actual firmware and we can trigger it by simply selecting it. So this will reset the console and then run through the firmware installation process. Once that's completed, the console will reset again and then drop you back into the menu. Now at this point, your PSP is running the ARC software and you can often play games and, and so on. But if you were to power down the console, you'd need to come back in here again and run the loader to reactivate the, the software. Now this is fine if you want to have the ability to use the standard and custom firmware. But if you want to have the console automatically boot into the ARC code, then we need to run the CIPL flasher. So back into the game menu and then the memory stick option, just highlight the CIPL flasher program and select it. So again, the console will reset and start the installation program. 
Now there are two versions of the CPL installation. We want the new version which works on all model models running firmware 6.61. If you're not running that, the classic version will work on 6.60 for some models, but to be honest, you're better off upgrading your console first. So press the left shoulder button to switch to the new version and then X to install it. Again, after the code has installed, the PSP will restart. And well done, your console is now fully soft modded. So to check that everything is installed correctly, navigate across to the settings menu, then go down to system settings, and then down to the bottom for system information. And this should bring up a screen that shows you that the console is running ARC, and if you've run the CPIL installer, then you should see that information as well. So if you've got this far, you're now ready for some games. So obviously you're gonna to have to get hold of some game backup files. Uh, and again, have a look on the internet to see um, how you do that. Now your game files do need to be in ISO format. Um, our ARC will work with a range of backup files, but the ISOs are probably the easiest to find. To install them then, we need to connect our console back up to our PC or, or, or plug your memory stick into your PC. And then on the root of that memory card, we need to create an ISO, and that needs to be all capitals, an ISO folder on the memory stick root. So once we've done that, we can then simply copy all of our game files across into this folder. So once that transfer is complete, we can then go back onto our PSP. In our XMB menu, if we go to the game section and then scroll down to the memory stick, select that. And then we should now see a list of all the games we've just installed. So if you want to play one, just select it and click X. So that's our PlayStation Portable all fully soft modded and ready for more action. So again, we can go on from here now. We can not only play our PSP games, but we can install various emulators and other homebrew software to really expand the whole capabilities of this great little console. So I hope you found this video useful. Please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel for more making, gaming and electronics projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon, and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.